In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can have a single play pause button for your Adobe Captivate project. Okay, one of the biggest challenges with the way Adobe Captivate functions is that we get a lot of stakeholders saying to us, I want a play pause button. I want a single button that when the project is paused, it becomes a play button. And when the project is playing, it becomes a pause button. And this is a little challenging to do. Now with many other applications, you can use what are called event listeners that will set the appearance of an object in your browser to display one thing or another depending on what other events are happening. Well, you don't really have that in Captivate unless you get into JavaScript. But today's solution, we're not getting into JavaScript. We're just doing some advanced actions. So let me show you the project I've built already right here. So here's the basic little project I created to demonstrate the kinds of things that you need to think about if you're going to try to create a single play pause button. Now I've created that single play pause button here on this slide. This is slide number one. And ideally, because you're gonna write some advanced actions that will reference this object, what you wanna do is place it on the first or one of the very early slides within your project where you wanna make it available. And then of course, go into your timing panel and display it for the rest of project as I've done here. Uh, you're gonna also want to turn off the pause function. We don't want this, uh, this button to by itself pause the slide when it reaches a certain point on the timeline. And for the convenience of other slides, I'm placing this object on top. So that way, you know, it's not gonna get blocked by anything later on in the course. If we go back to the properties inspector, you can see I've already set it to be used as a button, but I've deleted the rollover and the down state. And trust me on this, while it's nice to have a rollover effect on a button, uh, if your button changes its appearance, like this one does, the rollover state can only be one state and only one appearance. So that could interfere with the appearance of this. So the normal state in Captivate is basically playing. So I'm going under the assumption that this project is playing. So this button becomes a pause button, as you can see here. When it actually does get paused, it changes its appearance, as you can see here, to a play button. So it becomes a play button. Uh, now that, of course, requires a, a little bit of an advanced action. So let's write our first advanced action that will take care of the play pause. So let's go into our project dropdown menu, select advanced actions, and I'm gonna call this play underscore pause. This needs to be a conditional advanced action because we need to find out what is happening with your project first before we change the appearance of the button and apply a, a particular action. So we'll select the conditional tab here and we're gonna use a system variable that is also a command as well. However, I'm just using it to check whether the project is paused or not. So we're gonna select the variable CP command pause. And if you start to type in part of that, it will shorten the list of available uh, variables for you to select. So I'm gonna select that and we're gonna to check to see if it is equal to the literal value of zero. In other words, it's not paused. It's assuming that we're not paused. If it is, what do we wanna do? Well, simply put, we want to pause the slide. Now, because we have a button that represents the current state, we need to change the state of that button. So I'm going to change the state of my play pause button, in this case to pause, because that's what we're looking at right now. Similarly, we need the opposite. So what if, what if CP command pause is already equal to one? Well, we're going to do a few things. We're going to, first of all, continue, and we're going to change the state of our play pause button back to normal in this case. So we can save that as an action, click OK, and we can go ahead and close. And I can select the play pause button, go to my actions tab, 
and change the default from go to next slide to execute advanced actions and then choose our play pause action. It's the only one I have so far, so it shows up by default. Now, in this particular instance, we want to know when to pause this slide. And because the only thing that I can base it on is the end of this slide, I'm gonna to need to write an advanced action for the end of the slide. And this I'll use for all the slides in my project here. So I'm gonna write an advanced action called end of slide. We are going to pause the project at the end of every slide, and we're gonna change our play pause button to look paused as well. So we're gonna change the state of our play pause button to paused, okay? I'm gonna save this as an action, click OK, and close. So with the first slide selected on exit, we're going to execute advanced actions and select end of slide. We're gonna do the same for all the other slides in our project. which with only three slides is relatively easy to do. And, you know, if you are building a project, you could build a slide or two and then duplicate that so that it's already referencing that. Now, again, because your play pause button is only on slide one and displayed for the rest of the project, you don't need to make additional versions of this. We're only changing the appearance of an object that happens to be located on slide one. Now, where you run into problems as well is when you navigate from one slide to the other, because you might be paused at this point here and then press your go to next slide button, and then it's gonna take you to slide number two, but it won't change the appearance of the play pause button. So we need to make a special version of our go to next slide and go to previous slide actions just for this project. So the first thing we're going to do is go to project, go to advanced actions, and we will create go to next slide. And this we're simply going to change the state of our play pause button back to normal in case it's paused. If it's already normal, that's fine. And we're going to simply go to next slide, okay? I can save this as an action, click okay. And I'm not gonna close right away. I'll, I'll know to assign it to my next buttons later. But while I'm here, I might as well make the go to previous slide button as well. So I'm gonna duplicate this one. It's so simple to do this, you might not even need to duplicate it, but let's go to, and I'll just use the abbreviation per, for previous here, and we'll just change this to go to previous slide. Update that action, click OK, and close. Starting with our first slide, we'll select the go to next button, and instead of using the built-in function, we'll execute advanced actions and choose our go to next slide. On slide number two, we'll do the same thing here. We'll execute advanced actions, go to previous slide, execute advanced actions, go to next slide. And then on our final slide, we'll have the go to previous slide advanced action. Now I've left the skin editor on so that we have a progress bar and we'll actually be able to see what's happening behind the scenes. But normally if you're gonna create your own play and pause and next and back buttons, you won't necessarily want to display the progress bar. But again, I've left it on just for our purposes here. Let's preview in HTML5 in browser. Notice the play bar will switch to a play button at the end of the slide. And if I go forward, it switches back to a playing state, paused, and works just like you would expect. 
a single button play pause button would work. Same thing with going to the back. And you, of course, you can use it at any moment to pause the slide at the end and go forward to previous slides. All of your controls will work perfectly. And of course, remember that if you're adding additional controls and buttons, think about what the impact is to your play pause button, because you may need a special advanced action for those buttons as well. Hope this has been helpful to you. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to provide lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.